This coverage lets us assign a score to a collection of test cases. And so let's be a little bit more rigorous about it. So what test coverage really is, is a measure of the proportion of a program exercised during testing. So for example, we just talked about measuring the number of functions out of the total number of functions that were exercised by some test suite that we had. What's good about test coverage is it gives us a score. It gives us something objective that we can use to try to figure out how well we're doing. Additionally, when coverage is less than 100%, that is to say, is in our example, where we had failed to execute all of the functions in the software under test, we know what we need to do to get full coverage. We know what the functions are that we need to execute. Now we simply need to construct test cases that execute those functions. So these are good things about test coverage. On the other hand, there are also some disadvantages. First of all, test coverage, because it's a white box metric that's derived from the source code for our system, is not good at helping us find bugs of omission. That is to say, bugs where we've simply left out something that we should have implemented. The second drawback is, it could be really hard to know what a test coverage score of less than 100% means. And in safety critical software development, what's sometimes done is requiring 100% test coverage over certain coverage metrics. And that sort of removes this problem. It means that we don't have to interpret scores less than 100% because we're not allowed to ship a product until we get 100% test coverage. For larger, more complex software systems where the standards for correctness are not as high as they are for safety critical systems, it's often the case that it's difficult or impossible to achieve 100% test coverage, leaving us also with this problem of trying to figure out what that actually means about the software. A third disadvantage is even 100% coverage doesn't mean that all bugs were found. And you can see that sort of easily by thinking about the example where we we're measuring our coverage by looking at the number of functions we executed. Just because we executed some function, of course, doesn't mean that we found all of the bugs in that function. We may not have executed very much of it, or we may not have somehow found very many of the interesting behaviors inside that function.